Good afternoon all. Um, I'm in the garden again because it's a reasonably nice day. It's quite windy and actually just as I pressed the uh, camera the sun went in but never mind. So I'm trying to establish a test procedure for these USB solar panels. I've got this uh, Suoki one. It's got three uh, panel sections. Each section has four cells in it. I can't quite work out uh, yet whether these are monocrystalline or thin film. They look very smooth. I can't see any um, indications that they are monocrystalline, so I think this is a thin film panel. Now the manual that came with this thing is refreshingly brief, but there's some interesting stats here. Uh, in this table you can see that it says power 16 watts, but it also says charging port output, uh, DC 5 volts, 2.1 amps, Max, well, by a rough calculation, that's 10.5 watts max. So I think this 16 watts is the theoretical maximum if these panels were sort of engineered to their maximum power point, and I very much doubt that that could ever be achieved on one of these panels. But can we get the 10.5 watts, which is 5 volts times 2.1 amps? Of course, this is massively hampered as usual by a uh, cloud. This is a piece of welding glass. Let me just put that in front of the camera and point it up at the sky. So yeah, we're not going to get any power just at this moment. So on a reasonably bright day but with the sun obscured, this thing has dropped to 0.15 of an amp, 0.66 uh, six of a watt, so a th uh, two-thirds of a watt. So on, if you're not getting full sun, you're not going to get full power. Now I've brought out my um, infrared thermometer because uh, these panels did seem to be getting pretty hot when the sun was on them. Well, of course there's no sun now. So let's just check the temperature when the sun isn't on them. So I've got 22 degrees C on there, 21 on the middle one, and yes, they're, so they're all about 21, 22 degrees. Now they were about 45, something like that, when the sun was out. So, Murphy's Law, a uh, beautiful blue sky, but not where the sun is. And uh, with it having gone really dull now, because that big grey cloud, it's actually dropped to just 0.4 of a watt. But interestingly, the um, power bank that I'm charging does still say that it's charging. It's flashing from two lights to three. It's about half charged, which is ideal, really. There's no point trying to uh, charge an almost fully charged power bank, otherwise it's not going to draw anything. Now, I can't work out whether this thing has smart ports. It's saying, at the moment, Apple 2.1 amp, 2.7 volts D+, plus, 2 volts D-. minus. If I flap one of the panels uh, shut so that the voltage drops away, then... If you watch the 5.31 volts, as that drops down, it says unknown device. But that might just be because there's so little voltage left that it's not recognizing that 1.7, 1.6 as anything identifiable. And if I close it a little bit further, the thing just switches right off. So I was seeing uh, Samsung 2 amps uh, alternating with Apple 2.1 amps earlier on in the day, but that seems to have stopped now. Certainly since I've been using this much thicker, um, this is one of these uh, bendable, sort of quite uh, solid wires plugged into the USB ports in there because they're actually quite heavily recessed and uh, I couldn't uh, see what I was doing when the power monitor was connected directly in there, so I've had to put that extender on. Well that's interesting, now I am getting unknown device, 5.3 volts coming from the panel, but 1.7 and 1.6, 1.7, 1.6 on D plus D minus, and actually the sun's coming out now, so I don't quite know what this is doing. Uh, so yeah, we, now we do have proper sun, and I'm just getting really weird results on the monitor. I can't read that off the screen. 1.68, 1.58 on D plus D minus, 5.05, got one amp coming out of the uh, Current output though, can't see anything coming. And unknown device. So now I'm getting 1.58 amps out of it. That's actually quite a lot, but it's still saying unknown device, and the D plus D minus voltages are just odd.
1.67, 1 1.58. Let me switch across to the um, power screen. With watts, no, that's not the one. Watts, I want. So yeah, I'm actually getting uh, seven point seven watts. So it's certainly um, producing quite an impressive amount of power. Remember, the theoretical maximum is ten point five, and that's seven point seven. Now, are these starting to get hot now? Well, they're warming up because I do have a plan later on to uh, pour water on this thing to see if uh, I can improve the power by cooling the panels down. But uh, yeah, at the moment, seven point six watts. That's actually not bad. So let's check these temperatures again. Can't see my laser dot, but we're getting forty one up there, forty six. Oh, that's dropped again. I think this might have a hold function. Oh no, if I keep holding it, if I keep pressing the trigger, it doesn't. Can't see the laser there. Yeah, it is there. So 41, 41. Sun's gone in a bit now. So more waiting for uh, that lot to shift out of the way. Looks like there might be a little gap coming up quite soon. Now, of course, the other problem is I've got to find um, a power draw something that draws the most power. I think this Avantec is one of the heaviest uh, current draws but of course you can't see it because of the multiplexing interfering with my camera but there are three lights on there flashing with the fourth so this thing's virtually full so it's not drawing very much so let's switch to another one. This uh, EC technology one does seem to be the most uh, reliable at the moment drawing Please focus. Well, it's 0.9 of a watt. 0.8 of a watt. The sun's gone in again. Now, another problem I've got is that this um, sloping surface, which is actually a solar panel, is not actually pointing at the sun. It would need to be tilted up a fair bit more to be directly on axis. And I found that earlier on I was getting about seven and a half watts from the panel lying down like that. And if I tipped it up manually, I was able to get, uh, sorry, I'm trying to block the wind from my microphone. I was able to get uh, eight watts. So eight watts over seven and a half. So an extra half a watt simply by tipping it up and making sure it's on axis with the sun. Well, the sun's back out now, but I think because it's simply dropped a bit lower in the sky, um, I'm just not getting the same power I was getting an hour or so ago. I'm having so many problems uh, keeping this system set up properly with the wind blowing this umbrella over and uh, the uh, sun going in and out and various problems with trying to pick the right load on the end. Just not getting on very well. Let's just check the power output now. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's quite noticeable. Full strength sun on the panel and it's now dropped to 7.1. 7.0. I mean, you can almost see it dropping. It's uh, it's quite extraordinary, really. But uh, really, I'm quite impressed with this panel. I mean, the most I've seen out of it today was about 8 watts. It has a theoretical maximum of 10.5 watts. The 16 watt thing, I think, is, is just to be dismissed, really. I think that's just a, a number that's been plucked out of the air based on the, um, the size of the cells. But uh, I reckon if I was on the equator, and I wish I was, um, actually maybe not the equator but somewhere a bit warmer that um, on axis you know middle of June and all that stuff yes I think you could probably get ten and a half watts out of this panel and uh, Sun's gone behind a cloud and we're down to just half a watt now if you plug this thing in and got half a watt uh, having read that it should be capable of well 16 watts you'd be uh, quite disappointed I think but uh, I've lived with all my solar panels the amorphous ones there the uh, monocrystalline and these two up here for several years I know what they're capable of in full strength sun and how much less you get when the sun goes behind a cloud so of course I'm not expecting miracles from this panel but I'm actually impressed that it can get near its uh, headline or marked manual output um, when the sun is out now the next question I suppose is should you be charging a phone with this panel or should you be charging 
a power bank. Now these things are clearly set up for charging phones. They come with these nice zip pockets where you put your phone in. But it seems to me that it would be completely impractical to charge your phone. I mean, what happens if it rings? You're going to have to take it out of the pocket, disconnect it, put it back in the pocket, reconnect it. I think it's far more sense to offset the power into a power bank so you can charge the power bank the whole time that this thing is anywhere near the sun and then, I don't know, when you get into a tent or something you'd connect your phone to the power bank and uh, use it indirectly. Now, of course, a power bank wastes, well, almost half the power you put into it so you'd have to uh, account for that. So are these things a practical proposition? Well, I mean, in this country you've got uh, all this nonsense to contend with and uh, if the power output is going to vary from sort of 10 watts possibly uh, if conditions are completely optical, uh, optimum to a tenth of that or even a twentieth of that then uh, you could be very disappointed at the end of the day when there's been no sun to find that your power bank really hasn't increased in charge very much at all. And then you've got the problem of sort of devices which have a bit of a mind of their own. This RAV power power bank is happily accepting charge at the moment. Um, oh, the sun's gone in again. Just as I do go to film a shot, the sun goes in. It won't focus on the power bank, on the power meter. This is a waste of time. I keep having to stop the camera and wait for the sun to come back out. And the day's going by. The sun's just getting so low in the sky now. This is really starting to become impractical. Come on. That's better. So the RAV power is happily charging at the moment at uh, 5.8 watts. Now if I put my hand over the panel to cut the power, it suddenly just seems to give up. The RAV power's down there, it's stopped flashing its light. Now the sun's on the panel but it's just not drawing anything. So some devices are quite temperamental, they'll draw power happily until it's interrupted and then they just say, meh, not interested, not doing any more. Lots of sun on there. So um, some devices are temperamental, some are fine. The EC Technology power bank on the other hand happily draws its um, six and a half watts there. Come on! It's just the pits. So it's happily drawing uh, six and a half watts. Let's just flap the flap up to block off the light. And it immediately just goes back to drawing it again. So that one, much less temperamental. So I think when reviewing these items, uh, my conclusion would be, if you get one of these things, unfurl it on a not very sunny day, not have it on axis, you're going to be very disappointed it's going to provide very little power. If you can arrange for it to be tilted to face the sun, you've got good strong sun, no uh, clouds to obscure it, yes you'll, you, you can uh, quite easily get pretty close to the full rating of the panel, but the conditions do need to be absolutely optimum. And if uh, things aren't optimum, you can be down to 5% of, uh, of the rated or expected output. So if I'm going to do reviews of these panels, I'm going to have to identify a number of things. Which are the best cables? I mean, I brought this cable out because uh, it seems really thick, but then maybe the connectors aren't particularly good because I was having problems with it. This quite thin, flat cable actually seems to work really well. It doesn't look like it's uh, particularly up to the job, but it does seem to be. And then you've got to identify which device most reliably draws power from the uh, the solar panel and uh, other devices that uh, are a bit temperamental if the output from the panel dips momentarily um, and of course which is most realistic I mean will phones be temperamental will their um, draw on the power cut off if they uh, decide they don't like what's being uh, connected into them so there's a lot of uh, questions and a lot of things to think about so I've got to decide whether I really want to uh, start reviewing these things or whether the 
problems with sunshine in this country would just make the job uh, too frustrating. But of course these things fascinate me. I mean I am interested in solar power. I have been for many years so uh, I'm going to have to think about that. Cheerio.